In this video, I want to break down the Entity Framework database first approach as simply as I can. And before you watch this, I would recommend watching my Database Programming for Beginners series if you're not familiar with databases or SQL statements or how that all kind of ties together. It would also be helpful if you had a basic knowledge of C-sharp and object-oriented programming and uh, link and how link queries work. I am using Visual Studio 2015 and I have the SQL Server tools installed and if you didn't install that with Visual Studio I believe you can just go to the Microsoft website and download it and install it afterwards. So what is the Entity Framework? It is an ORM or an Object Relational Mapping Tool and ORMs essentially provide you with an object oriented way to access your database and they typically take care of a lot of the low level stuff for you. So in the case of the Entity Framework, if you remember in the Database Programming for Beginners series, or if you've worked with ADO.NET before, you know that to do something simple like select a value from a database or insert a row to the database, you need all these objects like a SQL connection and a SQL command or a SQL data reader and just all that garbage. And the Entity Framework takes care of a lot of that low-level stuff for you. In fact, almost all of it. And when I say that it provides us with an object-oriented way to interact with our database, it essentially will represent a table in your database as a class. And a column on that table would be represented as a property on that class. And like I said, I'm going to be using the database first approach. And this approach is useful, as the name implies, if you already have a database. Maybe you're working with a legacy database or maybe your DBAs control your database creation and you just want to get up and going and generate all the code needed to interact with your database. So it's a very quick approach and it may be uh, preferable especially with a small application. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I have the SQL Server Object Explorer window open. If you don't have that it is under the view menu here and if it's not here then that means you don't have the SQL Server tools installed properly. Under my local DB MS SQL local DB server, and I want to I want to add a new database, and I'll call it Recipes. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to go to my Recipes database, and I want to add a new table and I will call this the recipe table and I'm only going to use one table just to keep things simple and Visual Studio gives us an ID column which is an integer and it's set as our primary key I want to keep that I just want to change is identity to true this just means it will auto increment the value of ID each time it inserts a new row I'll just add one other column called name to keep things really simple and use an invarchar50 which will essentially be a string when we code against the table and I think that's it I'm gonna hit update and update database we have a nice little green successful message green always means success unless you're in Java Eclipse has all these weird red messages and I can never tell if they're errors or info. Anyway, I'm going to close that for now and I'll leave this open, but I want to create a new project, a console application, and I'll call it Recipes App. The first thing I want to do is right click on my project and add a new item and I'm going to choose under data the ADO.NET entity data model and this is where all the magic happens and entity framework will generate the classes we need to code against our database and I'm going to call it the recipes model here it's essentially asking us how do you want to use entity framework and I'll cover the other approaches like code first and model first in separate videos but here I want to use the from database approach because we already have our database. Here I want to point it to my 
database. So I'm going to use the local DB slash MS SQL local DB server, which is just the server name here. And it will populate the databases list for me. And I want to choose recipes, get a successful test connection. And here you can see recipes entities. This is the class name that will be used to essentially represent the database. And I'm going to keep that the same. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to use Entity Framework 6. And it's asking which database objects do you want to include in your model. I'm going to choose tables because I want my recipe table included. And I don't have any views or stored props to worry about, so I'll leave those unchecked. I'm going to leave pluralize or singularize generated object names checked. And I'll show you where that comes into play in just a minute. And I'll leave this as recipes model. Also, I'm going to leave include foreign key columns checked, even though I don't have any foreign keys to worry about. And click finish. Then just give Entity Framework a minute to do its thing. Okay, so I have the model here and it generated a recipe table for us and the properties ID and name. We won't worry too much about the model right now or the diagram. Um, we'll look more into that when we do the model first approach. I do want to go to my solution explorer though and under the model and under recipes model.tt you see recipes.cs. So if you open that up, you can see it's auto-generated code, and it is the class that represents our recipe table. So Entity Framework generated this for us. And obviously it's not too complex because we only have two columns, but you can see how this is very convenient if you have a very large table. And while you do have less control over the how the class is created, which you can change, um, it does get you up and running very quickly. I'm going to close that and start coding. The first class I want to take a look at is Recipes Entities. Like I said earlier, Rep Recipes Entities is basically the class that will represent our database. That may not be the correct way to say it, but that's how I think of it. And you can see that context does have a dispose method. So I am going to wrap this in a using statement. And if you haven't seen this before, this just means that once the code inside this block is done executing, it will automatically dispose of this class for us. So I don't have to call context.dispose explicitly. The first thing I want to do is add a new recipe to our recipe table. So I'm going to take a look at what context object has and you can see down here it has a recipes collection and it's a DB set collection. But for the purposes of this video just think of it as a general collection like a list. So since I'm dealing with object oriented code I'm not going to think about it as adding a row to a table like I would if I were writing SQL statements. Instead I want to think of it as adding an object to my recipes collection. So if you think about how you would just do that with a normal list, say I have a string list, all I would have to do is call strings.add and I have a new object added to my collection. It's basically going to work the same way here. The first thing I'll do actually is add a new recipe object and I'll just use the object initializer here to set the name to chicken salad. So now I'm gonna call context.recipes.add so I'm adding a new recipe to my collection and I'll just pass it the recipe I just created. Okay, 
If you go over here to your recipe table, dbo.recipe, and click View Data, you can see there's no data here. But I'm going to run my application. Okay. And I'm going to go here, but you're going to see after I refresh that the data is still not there. And that's because of one crucial method call I forgot, which is save changes. Save changes is essentially your commit. And you can see here it says saves all changes made in this context to the underlying database. So you're going to need this method call after basically any data operation that you want to commit to the database. So now if I run my application and refresh my data, you can see that I have my chicken salad row added to the database. So I didn't have to speak any other languages. I didn't have to write SQL or use a bunch of uh, low-level stuff. All I had to do was create a new recipe, add it to a collection, and then call this to save my changes. So that was an insert. Let's take a look at how you would do a select. I'm going to do recipe equals context.recipes and I'm just going to use some link here first or default to find the recipe with the name chicken salad. And in this case I could have just done first or default and it still would have returned the chicken salad but I just want to show you how to query for a specific item. So to prove that I got the correct recipe I want to write out the recipe ID which we know will be 1. And context.savechanges is not needed in this case because I'm just selecting. Uh, of course I need the console.read so that it doesn't automatically close. And you can see here that it printed 1. So we successfully ran a select against the database. Okay. So I ran an insert up here in just a few lines. I ran a select in one line. Next thing I want to do is run an update. So I'll actually leave that and change the recipe name to burger. Okay. And since this is an update operation, I do need this line again. And I will comment that out for now. And run the application. Now when I go back to my data and refresh, you can see that it updated the name to burger. Um, finally, we will try to delete a row from the table. So I'll comment out my update and actually I will undo that and instead of updating here I'm going to do a context.recipes dot remove and just remove the recipe I just fetched and I need to change this to burger since we updated it and run the application and if I refresh I should see that I now have no rows because I just deleted the only row I had so as you can see I only needed just a few lines of code to do my inserts and update and delete and select and I was able to avoid the low-level ADO.NET code that I had to use in my other video series. Now I will add the obvious disclaimer that I used a very simple example 
and as your database becomes more complex, so does the entity framework. I will try to cover some other common scenarios like foreign keys and multiple tables in a separate video, and I'm also planning to make videos on the model first and code first approaches to entity framework. If you have anything, whether it be entity framework or just general C-sharp topics you would like a video on, please let me know. And other than that, I will table this discussion for now, pun intended. Thank you.